Warning, the following podcast doesn't just contain adult language. It's brought to you by adult language. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by adult language, Blue Apron, and by Tony D's House of October Surprises. Call me, Rudy. I'm, I'm not saying I could do good. I'm just saying I could do better than the guy you got now. And now, The Scathing Atheist. It's The Simpsons Watch Along Podcast. Because Professor Frank would agree with Professor Farnsworth that we did, in fact, evolve from filthy monkey men. It's October 22nd. And it's International Caps Lock Day. Yeah, for when you're losing a Facebook fight, but you want to lose it loudly. (laughs) (laughs) I have no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. (laughs) And from Jason Voorhees, New Jersey, Cincinnati Swing State, and Good Husband, Georgia, this is The Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, California churches assure us that it's been votes and prayers this whole time. Donald Trump demands to have fact checkers from The Onion at the final debate. (laughs) And Don Ford will be here to talk about hemorrhoids. But first, the diatribe. Did you ever hear about the time that Tony Perkins offered to buy a homeless guy a burger but wouldn't spring for the fries? Okay, how about the time that Eric Prince helped his elderly neighbor carry out his trash but left the heaviest bags for the neighbor? Okay, one more, one more. What about that one time when the asshole who started the Proud Boys helped an old lady cross the street but got bored three quarters of the way through and gave up on her? Never heard of any of them, huh? I'd be tempted to say we don't tend to write up international headlines about the times when otherwise immoral people who head immoral organizations do somewhat good things half-assedly. But if that was the case, why the fuck would I know about the Pope just now endorsing civil unions? My God, how low is the bar for this guy? Right? How I'd love to have a job where I was graded on the same curve as the fucking Pope. Half the time, the podcast is just like meaningless, random words from 10 feet away from the microphone. The other half, it's me trying to explain the extenuating circumstances around my latest conviction. And yet somehow I'm getting record downloads and all the reviews say, well, at least he's not an ex-Nazi who's directly involved in the child rape cover up. It must be nice. But yeah, Wednesday morning, I wake up to the late breaking news. And by that, I mean pretty goddamn late to be breaking that the Pope tacitly endorsed civil unions for same sex couples unofficially. Right. This statement uh, uh, apparently came in a documentary called Francesco about how awesome the guy running the history's largest child rape cabal is. And at some point, the Pope says, quote, homosexuals have a right to be part of the family. They're children of God and have a right to a family. Nobody should be thrown out or be made miserable because of it. Adding, quote, what we have to create is a civil union law. That way they are legally covered, end quote. And that statement has even left wing media outlets praising his moral authority. I I did think about what a tepid, condescending, backhanded declaration this really is. First of all, having the right to a family is the single most basic goddamn thing you can imagine, right? Like he's exactly one unit of recognition above. They have the right to use all the oxygen in the atmosphere without paying for it. He's saying we shouldn't actively disown them and implied at the end of that sentence is any more. Right. You and I don't have to make statements like this because nobody assumes we would endorse disowning your brother for being gay. Think about how baseline awful a human you have to be before that would be anybody's default assumption. And, And as if that's not bad enough already, keep in mind that he only means this conditionally. He's certainly not saying they have a right to adopt children. Right. He's the head of the organization most directly responsible for inhibiting adoption by same sex couples. So when he says they have a right to a family, there's a huge unspoken asterisk weighing down the back half of that fucking sentence. What's more, he stopped shy of endorsing equality, 
right? His big moral revelation is that gay people should have some kind of separate but equal form of marriage. His endorsement is for civil unions, the don't ask, don't tell of the marriage debate. But wait, don't let me oversell it, right? Because it's not like the policy of the Catholic Church has changed. It will no doubt continue to be the single largest contributor in the world to campaigns against marriage equality. Their official policy remains that Catholic teachings cannot, quote, lead in any way to approval of homosexual behavior or to legal recognition of homosexual unions, end quote. And as if we need to douse the embers of commendability even more at this point, this isn't even new. In 2013, he famously asked his press pool, who am I to judge when asked about LGBTQ relationships? He's flirted with acceptance here and there in the past, but never beyond the boy shucks. I sure do wish I wasn't actively oppressing you level. And yet, despite the fact that his words are too little, too late, impotent, insincere and unexceptional, the Washington Post called his statement a remarkable shift. The New York Times went with extraordinary. Vox dubbed it groundbreaking. Meanwhile, not a goddamn one of them even acknowledged the irony of printing the ethical pronouncements of a man who is still this very day and hour harboring child rapists from justice. One would be hard pressed to find an institution anywhere in the world directly responsible for more evil than the Catholic Church. Right, like I mean, I'd say impossible if we're counting all of history, but damn hard, even if you restrict yourself to like my lifetime. And yet when the head of that institution makes an off the cuff comment about some of his best friends being gay, the world's media trip over themselves in their rush to write a flattering puff piece about it and slap it on the front fucking page of their websites and papers. Of course, we all know where this comes from. Right. It's rooted in the same perverse sense of fairness that had mainstream media outlets reporting both sides of the climate change debate until it was too late to solve the problem. It's the same misguided attempt at balance that has to pretend both sides of the political aisle are equally responsible for the vitriolic political climate. It's the same fallacious bullshit that gives equal credence to both the truth and the lie. American media have had to spend an awful lot of time talking about the institutionalized protection and enablement of kid rape. It's crazy newsworthy. When you consider the scale of the problem, both geographically and temporally, it's one of the most evil things ever done in human history. So obviously the media had to talk about it a lot, right? Like it's remained newsworthy for decades now, and there's no sign it's about to drop out of the news cycle. And that leaves a lot of people in the media really uncomfortable. They're always talking about the bad side of Catholicism, so they feel the need to also talk about the good side, even if they have to exaggerate, misdirect, or outright mislead to get there. And I hate that I have to point this out, but there's no goddamn way to lie your way to the truth. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the Tetra and Hydro to Mike Kniebenal, Heath Enright, and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to say hi? I'm not an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm an asshole? I th see what you did there, Heath. <laughs> And speaking of drugs, recreational or otherwise, I wanted to wish Sarah Rose luck while she's recovering from her surgery. The good news, Sarah Rose, is that Jeff loves you. He's right there. You have him entirely wrapped around your little finger. So milk this shit and make him do stuff for you. He wants to do stuff for you and also get better soon. But not too soon, um, because if it turns out you have mutant healing, the government will come after that. No, that's true. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Pace yeah. yourself. Pace yourself. And use it for the favors. Like we're in you know, a work. It really. Right. Work well, it. exactly. It's yeah. quarantine. What are you going to do? Recover and then fucking <laughs> sit at home? Boring. Yeah. Boo. Chill. Get into some <laughs> weird stuff with the favors. Make up some side in our lead story tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it is no secret that the Republican Party can only exist by bribing votes from single-issue white Christian zealots. And that's been working for pretty much my whole life for the Republican Party. But now their candidate for president is so goddamn objectionable that they also added disenfranchising pretty much everyone else besides single-issue white Christian zealots, and he's still not winning in the polls. No. So Trump tossed in a threat of neo-Nazi terrorism if he loses, and claim that mail-in ballots don't count anyway because there's mythical rampant voter fraud that 
that somehow only helps Democrats. Yeah, right. Still losing despite all that stuff. So now we have Christian right churches putting up illegal ballot collection boxes, <laughs> thus creating the mythical fraud for real, but on the other side. Like, funny feeling they're not going to be helping Democrats on this one. Yeah. <laughs> what I love about this is that churches are so used to having no laws apply to them that they cannot wrap their heads around the fact that they can't just declare themselves a polling place. No. Right. Right. They're That's like, no, I'll get a voting machine. Let's make it fucking yeah, happen. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Well, honestly, they confirmed Barrett to the fucking court. And I sincerely believed we were a polling place has a 50, 50 shot of passing muster. Yeah, so. That's fair. That is Absolutely. Fair. Sincerely held ballots. <laughs> fucking great. So just in case it wasn't obvious, do not bring your ballot to a church and drop it in their box of church and state. That's, that's not a thing. But that didn't stop Freedom's Way Baptist in Santa Clarita, California from constructing a counterfeit ballot box with a sign that said official ballot drop box. Wow. And then posting photographic evidence of their felony level fraud on Facebook. The box also said, approved and provided by the GOP collected by a Republican official. And that was right next to their Johnson Amendment violating posts about the Christian right Republicans you're supposed to vote for, which was right next to their posts about the, the opposite of Black Lives Mattering, whatever that would be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And, and that's just one example of one church. Apparently, these unipartisan vote harvesting drop boxes for the GOP are getting reported all over California and probably not getting reported elsewhere by the, the local news of fucking mud junction, wherever the fuck, but I'm sure it's happening. And yeah. just imagine if this was a mosque yep. and not a church. <laughs> yeah. I think we know the only solution here, gentlemen. We need Satanist ballot boxes yep. in the shape of Baphomet spreading his cheeks. Let's <laughs> make it. <laughs> It's amazing how many problems that would solve, honestly. Right? Done. So this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. I mean, just think about that Johnson Amendment I was talking about. These churches are saying themselves, okay, well, we're a, we're a giant taxpayer-subsidized illegal super PAC for the GOP, but legal somehow. And we send the government TikTok videos of our crimes, and that's super fun. But it feels like we're making this electoral terrorism harder than it needs to be. Let's just <laughs> yeah steal the votes directly, right? <laughs> so either that works and votes are being handled by a pastor and then a GOP vote collector guy, or it doesn't work, in which case it does work because it's evidence of mail-in voter fraud. Right? Yeah. The president of the United States and his party are going for the old shitting yourself to get a fecal mistrial technique as a campaign strategy. That's yeah. where we're at. Well, well, not just as a campaign strategy. Let's so be doing a lot of different clear. stuff related it's to this It's a whole brand. Words. It's a pandemic response strategy, <laughs> foreign policy. Krav Maga. And in religion of five easy pieces news, the religion of peace, that's Islam, is at it again oh, this week. Islam? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, anyways, they're at it again <laughs> this week when... In response to a beloved Parisian history teacher showing caricatures of the Islamic prophet Muhammad during a discussion of free speech and the Charlie Hebdo murders, a radical Islamic terrorist followed him home and cut his head off. Wow. All right. Yeah, just give me a second. I'm going to update the scoreboard. Um, yeah, go ahead. 21st century secular beheadings. Oh, no, still zero. Okay, religious yep. beheadings. Yep. All of them. Great. Okay. Why are we playing this game? Maybe a 10 run rule? I don't yeah, know. But, yeah. Can we just call it? Despite their marketing, they're not super into mercy. Yeah, that is, that's <laughs> an issue. Nope. Now, the killer was shot to death when he attacked the police with an air rifle as they tried to arrest him. But so far, the French government has detained 15 additional suspects and counting, including locals who are accused of issuing a fatwa against the teacher, four students who identified the teacher to his killer for payment, and an investigation is underway against the ironically named Collective Against Islamophobia in France. Huh. Okay, well, technically, they're kind of nailing it. The, the fear of Islam is very rational, and now, like, <laughs> extra, <laughs> extra fucking rational. And they are yeah, no, nailing taking it. Taking the phobia right out of that fear, yeah. yeah. And it's worth pointing out that 
all of this takes place against the backdrop of the week where the folks who provided weapons to the Charlie Hebdo terrorists are on trial, right? It can be easy to be stuck in the Americentric view that Christo fascists are the only folks to worry about. But I think this story, as well as, you know, most of the other ones we've been reporting on for the last seven this plus show? years is that yeah. when you're looking for brutal murder for no reason, any old religion will do, people. Any old religion. Well, I mean, it's not all the religions all of the time. It's 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 all the religions all of the times they have even the slightest whiff of power. It's the, yeah. it's the prerequisite. Mm -hmm. And in Skeptics with 3Ks news tonight, with Biden leading by <laughs> double digits in national polls, thank you, consistently leading in all the swing states that matter and given an 87% chance of winning by 538 as of this record, Trump has opted for a new line of attack in hopes of shifting this election after having failed in his efforts to paint his opponent as a socialist, a communist, a capitalist, but in a bad way, mentally unfit, anti-police, anti-American, Kamala's puppet, Bernie Sanders and Mr. Rogers. But again, in a bad way, he launched a new attack, warning his supporters that Biden will, quote, listen to science and quote, pause for audible gasp, gasp. And gasp. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is he picturing? Just like a, a secret back room full of data? Smoking cigars and pulling the strings? <laughs> Flash cut to Anthony Fauci sadly putting away his hand puppets. Well, that's four weekends of classes wasted. Yeah, right, wasted. Right. right. So yeah, <laughs> this ominous proclamation came during a rally with thousands in attendance on Sunday where Trump demonstrated his commitment to not listening to scientists by having a rally with thousands in attendance. <laughs> yep. But in case it wasn't clear to everybody, he doubled down warning rally goers that Biden is, quote, going to lock down. He's going to want us to lock down. He'll listen to the scientists. And then when the collective retching and booing died down, he <laughs> added, if I listened to the scientists, we would right now have a country that would be in a massive depression instead of we're like a rocket ship. Oh, really? The Challenger? <laughs> <laughs> the rocket ship? Uh, he concludes, take a look at the numbers, end quote. Okay, I'm looking. Was he done? Was yeah. he you sure that's the end quote? <laughs> oh, maybe it's everyone says our case numbers are soaring. Like a there rocket. you go. Easy yeah, our unemployment numbers. Yeah, <laughs> if by like a rocket ship, Trump means not tethered to anything happening here on Earth, I guess he nailed it. <laughs> uh, but it is as it stands, we are very much in a depression. And when he says, take a look at the numbers, I'm sure that's because if you take a look at the letters as well, they're going to spell out what a terrible <laughs> fucking job he's done with this pandemic. OK, but to his credit. Look at the numbers is a bluff that's going to pay off with any Trump supporter at this point in history. <laughs> <laughs> All right, though, that's fair. A spokesperson for the Biden campaign reached out to Trump and promised to return the silver platter when they were done with it, tweeting, quote, <laughs> This is tellingly out of touch and the polar opposite of reality. Trump crashed the strong economy he inherited from the Obama-Biden administration by lying about and attacking the science and layoffs are rising. Meanwhile, Joe Biden will create millions more jobs than Trump and tweet. Biden himself chose a more laconic response, simply tweeting the headline out that Trump warned that he'd listened to the scientists and added dot, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> And speaking of tweeting out headlines. Yeah, speaking of silver platters. <laughs> in Peel the Onion News. Oh. Area Man believes headline that starts with the phrase Area Man because <laughs> he doesn't know how the internet works. And that Area Man is the president of the goddamn yeah. United States in the most perfect encapsulation of his stupid fucking existence and our stupid fucking tragic reality. Donald Trump accidentally made the most honest statement of his career last week when he retweeted an article from a Christian satire site indicating that the man in charge of our nuclear launch codes actually believed that Twitter turned itself off like yep. with a switch in order to stop the spread of negative news about Joe Biden. <laughs> Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If we could just get CNN to publish, Trump won't drink the stuff under the sink because he's chicken. This whole thing solves <laughs> itself, people. I, I know you're desperately trying for hyperbole, Eli, but 
If you recall, he literally suggested that. Uh, it didn't <laughs> happen. Our job has been hard for four It's been years. really fucking hard. It's been hard. <laughs> yep. I would like to talk about President Joe Biden, please. Well, you can't. This, <laughs> this whole thing actually really happened in real reality. Trump retweeted an article from the Babylon Bee with the headline, Twitter shuts down entire network to slow spread of negative Biden news. And here's the actual words from the leader of the country to go along with that article that he retweeted. Quote, wow, this has never been done in history. This includes Biden's really bad interview last night. Why is Twitter doing this? Bring more attention to Sleepy Joe and Big T. I guess Twitter is Big T in his head. End quote. With absolutely no winky face characters. There's yeah, no excuses. Important. This was yep. not sarcastic. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, he's right in that it's never been done in history. That, okay. <laughs> Technically correct. Yes. And I know the president, he's just trying to live up to Sarah Palin's voluminous devouring of all the media. But here's what it says in that article that he shared unironically. Quote, after seeing account after account tweet out one especially bad story about Biden, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey, the huge liberal leftist progressive Biden <laughs> fan, apparently, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey realized he had to take action. Dorsey smashed a glass box in his office reading, break in case of bad publicity for Democrats. Inside the case was a sledgehammer for smashing Twitter's servers. Dorsey ran downstairs and started smashing as many computers as he could, but he did need to ask for some help as the hammer was pretty heavy. None of the programmers could lift the hammer. Eventually, they managed to program a robot to pick up the sledgehammer and smash the servers. This is one of those funny articles they write mm -hmm. at the Babylon yeah. Bee. Yep. Mm -hmm. After hearing the Twitter employees talk about critical theory the robot got woke and began attacking all the cis white males. End quote. That is almost certainly the least funny thing I've ever seen that wasn't a dead animal. That's it's close. I, I got to say the Babylon B because I went down a rabbit hole of reading their their like satire. It's a fascinating human experiment, right? Because the core of humor a lot of the time is empathy. Right. But the people at the Babylon B don't have any empathy. They're just South Park. We make fun of everyone bigots. So you get to see humor without humanity. And it's it's like an alien's attempt at funny. They are. And I, I almost mean this as a compliment. As funny as you can be without a soul. <laughs> well, <laughs> South Park is as funny as you can be. With yeah, a that's, soul. yeah, that's fair. They are not. <laughs> and again, this is 100% real. I mean, sadly, the woke robot that attacks cis white males is not real mm -hmm. yet. We'll see. But we would deserve that. But the story is real. We've been saying that Trump's such a ridiculous bobblehead caricature of himself that satire is not even possible. <laughs> but somehow he took it a step further. He, he, he beat us. I don't know. Now we have a, a fractal of an inception of an Ouroboros of fake news. It's insane. We need a fucking safe word to read the news at this point. So, all right, Yosemite. Yo, uh, that's going to be our safe word, Yosemite. And we also need a federal law that The Onion doesn't ever write an article about, like, North Korea flying an aggressive kite over the DMZ <laughs> lest the world be plunged into a nuclear holocaust. Yeah. Can we also agree that you have to achieve some bare minimum level of humor before social media labels you as satire rather than bullshit? Oh, please. Wouldn't that be nice, too? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Pass. And in hot, saucy mama's news, as our nation pushes another right wing shill onto the Supreme Court, as babies still sit in cages at the border and as an entire half of our political spectrum bats their eyes about whether or not they'll overthrow the government if they lose this coming election, the Karens over at One Million Moms have a new enemy this week. And it's a hot sauce ad. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a hot sauce ad from like two years ago. Right? Yep. <laughs> what the fuck is happening in your life? <laughs> that you're, you're watching broadcast television ads from January of 2019. Well, That's they, insane. They saw it back then. 
Heath, it just it took this long before they were ready to talk about it. They've been <laughs> collecting their thoughts they've and putting been, it all together. They've been processing yeah. <laughs> and getting over it. So yeah, quick reminder, if you don't know who One Million Moms is, first off, most important, not a million of them. Nope. As of right now, they have almost 5,000 Twitter <laughs> followers, but... Uh, you know, maybe the other 995,000 moms just don't tweet. Right, yeah. The no. royal million. Yeah, and they <laughs> specialize in getting mad about stupid shit like this. Regular listeners to our show will remember that last month they were mad when Dole put out an ad telling people to go fruit bowl themselves. But if you want to go down the rabbit hole of stupid Christian crazy, one million moms is the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, no, it's a million moms worth of bat shittery, at least. I mean, maybe that's what they mean. Oh, there you go. There you go. So <laughs> the ad in question, as Heath mentioned, is two years old and comes from Frank's Red Hot, or as fellow hot sauce fans will know it, somehow saltier ketchup. And their new tagline, Salty. I put that bleep on everything, received a strong condemnation from the moms who said in their statement, quote, Frank's Red Hot ad is irresponsible and offensive to customers. This inappropriate advertisement is airing during prime time. Nope. When children are likely watching, the bleeped out word creates an unnecessary curiosity in children. And there is nothing funny about swearing or kids mimicking this behavior. It's, it's in prime time from two years ago in it the is. past. <laughs> Big Bang Theory, damn it. Big Bang Theory. <laughs> the commercial is extremely destructive and damaging to impressionable children. End quote. So, yeah. Uh... Big congrats to One Million Moms for officially coming out against curiosity in children. I, guess. I mean, we knew they were, but good for them for saying it. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm terrified because she just said there's nothing funny about swearing. So I might need to get some fucking resumes <laughs> out there. And while I touch that up, we'll turn things over to my lovely wife, Lucinda. A man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she was. If it's a legitimate rape. It makes you a slut, right? It, cooking can be fun. Hey, I'm proud of a man. This week in Massachusetts. I'm going to make a bet. We're recording on Wednesday, so the 60 Minutes interview isn't coming out for a few days yet. Unless Trump drops it on YouTube. But I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction about the video I haven't seen anyway. So just in case you hadn't heard, Trump made a bunch of headlines on Tuesday when he apparently stormed out of an interview with CBS's Leslie Stahl. 60 Minutes is doing an episode that includes interviews with both candidates and their running mates. Or at least that was the plan. Trump got pissy halfway through the interview and walked out, then refused to come back for a segment he was supposed to film with Mike Pence afterwards. Now, there have been a couple of reports where unnamed sources characterized the interview as bad, but not unusually bad. Nobody specified what question or line of questioning set him off, but the White House has confirmed he bailed on the interview, and Trump went on a bitchy little tweet storm about Leslie Stahl afterwards. Then he whined about her during a rally later. So here's my prediction. I'm guessing Leslie Stahl was no harder on him than Chris Wallace was on Fox News or Jonathan Swan was for Axios. I'm guessing the misogynist just can't handle that same treatment at the hands of a gender he considers inferior to his own. And I'm also guessing that's going to make for a damn interesting dynamic in tonight's debate. And let's not make the mistake of thinking this is a Trump thing. This is a GOP thing, and they've been cultivating it for decades. I think any honest person can admit that sexism is a big part of the reason Trump was elected. But it wasn't just sexism against Hillary. A lot of misogynists liked having a candidate that was openly hostile to women and women's rights. A candidate who wasn't going to play along with the idea that women had an equal say. The GOP have been planting seeds of misogyny beneath their platform since the 80s and the first rumblings of the moral majority. So it should surprise exactly nobody when they harvest rampant sexism. And we were reminded of that yet again when Oklahoma Senator James Linkford went on a Christian podcast called On the Edge and started spouting off about how if God had his druthers, the U.S. government would be entirely populated by Christian men. And no, he wasn't just using men as a stand-in for humanity unless he got way more progressive about lesbian marriage since the last time I saw him, because he refers specifically about how the government needs godly men who love their wives. And let's face it, even if that was the case, he'd still be excusing discrimination against one group by pointing out that he meant to discriminate against a different group. And again, that's not the case. He literally intended to discriminate against both. 
Also, quick before I wrap things up, I want to remind you that as hard as it is to follow any single thread through today's news cycle, we're still on the verge of cementing a conservative, anti-woman, theocratic majority on the Supreme Court for the rest of my life. So, you know, vote like it. And with that reminder echoing in your ears, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. Next up in headlines in pity litter news tonight. Fantastic. Christians tried to put their tongues in their cheek and missed this week when they named their <laughs> whiny ass self pitying persecution complex fest non essential. Because, you see, uh, governmental restrictions vis a vis COVID 19 haven't been sufficiently submissive to religious bullshit by failing to deem theirs essential services, or at least. That's what they're hoping you're going to take away from the fact that they named their conference after them not mattering. <laughs> yeah, I know they were going for the like take back deplorables angle, but now you're just self labeling. Yeah, right? Just- <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So this who's who of who's that's took place Sunday night at the Calvary <laughs> Chapel Church in Chino Hills, California, and brought together hundreds of maskless, shoulder to shoulder Christian worshipers to lament the fact that they're not allowed to bring together hundreds of Christian worshipers. And it included all the covid denialist hits like only six percent of covid deaths are actually related to covid. It's my right to risk your life. And Donald Trump should be reelected president. It even included the claim from Charlie Kirk, no less, that the national lockdown was the, quote, worst mistake in the history of our country, end quote. Despite the fact that, A, there was never a national lockdown and B, all of American history. Yeah. Listen, Donald Trump's done more for the covid community than any president, (laughs) including Lincoln. Yeah, right, right. Now, Kirk wasn't the only member of the scathing atheist least wanted in attendance. Some of Charlie Kirk's best friends, David J. Harris Jr., was there because they're pretty sure that when a black guy says all lives matter, it stops being racist. Uh, Dinesh D'Souza (laughs) was there to rail against liberals, Hollywood, the media, and people who commit the crime he went to prison for committing. And, of (laughs) course, actor, bigot, and gam muse Kurt Cameron was also there to stick his butt in one direction while flailing his arms in the other. Seriously, watch that man talk. It's like his ass and his hands are trying to avoid each other or something. (laughs) I mean, to be fair, if I were Kirk Cameron's ass, I'd try to strike out on a solo career as well. (laughs) Especially after we know what he's done to it, right? He has not treated that ass well. (laughs) Growing pains. (laughs) And in Haven't Got a Q News, fans of the mysterious online poster and Nostradamus for dumb racists, QAnon, were disappointed this week when one of Q's earliest and most frequent predictions that JFK Jr. wasn't really dead and would be revealed as Donald Trump's running mate at a rally in Dallas this week failed to come true. Yeah, I mean... Dallas would have been gauche, right? Like, <laughs> probably nailed it, but they're just waiting for a better location. Right, yeah. Sure. No, no. He's alive. But interestingly enough, a mysterious online voice calling himself R predicted that that wouldn't happen. <laughs> Ooh. So for those of you who have been living under a very, very lucky rock for the last five years, <laughs> QAnon is allegedly a high-level government official with Q level clearance who (laughs) decided to use a bunch of (laughs) Nazis favorite website to reveal a secret cabal of political slash Hollywood satanic pedophiles by making a series of wild and obviously false predictions. Yeah. Okay. And just for the record, the Q clearance. This is so good. It's from the Department of Energy. And it relates to secret stuff about our nuclear program. Yeah. That, I mean, that's that. real, but that's what it's about. Yeah. So unless Hillary is a a nuclear pedophile, <laughs> it seems unrelated. I don't understand why like, it's the title of the thing. It's so dumb. <laughs> <sighs> but uh, by the way, it is worth noting that Q is in all likelihood just the owners of named Nazi message board who were trying to drum up business on their website mm-hmm. by stealing from David Icke who in turn stole all his ideas from everyone who hasn't liked the Jews throughout all of history. Mm -hmm. And despite this super obvious fact, way, way too many people think Q is real. And and, and not just because way too many means greater than two in this instance. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
So yeah, like I said, not a great week for QAnon believers, but just as soon as it's announced that Tom Hanks has been arrested by Russian double agent Robert Mueller, we're all going to look pretty silly for doubting them. Yeah, until then, though. (laughs) And in Steers and Queers news tonight, Republicans seem weirdly concerned with the fate of cows under a unified Democratic (laughs) government. (laughs) There have been repeated efforts from the president down to suggest that the Green New Deal calls for national bovicide. Killing all the cows, Yep. yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. bovicide is a word, by the way. In, in one of the weirdest political ads of this or any other election, Nebraska Democrat Kara Eastman is shown with her head superimposed over a raw steak with the actual accusation that she's planning to, quote, get rid of farting cows, end quote. And now televangelist Frank Amedia, who listeners will remember for growing back baby kidneys with his mind, yep. is warning that if all his viewers don't vote Republican, America is on the verge of legalized cow fucking. (laughs) Okay. I mean, on the verge is a little strong. (laughs) Like, we're not fucking the cows until we go carbon neutral in 2050. Well, right. Yeah, no, it's a long ways off. (laughs) Time to get ready. Also, talk about not reading the room. Frank, if anybody is fucking cows, it's your audience, Yeah, right. Yeah, don't give them a reason. Yeah. So (laughs) this segment began with the media urging his viewers to pray for Republicans and assured them that if they did, it would swing the election 10 points towards the GOP, which (laughs) isn't enough to net Trump the popular vote, according to the current polling averages. But fearing their dismal polling numbers may cause his audience to lose hope, he added uh, this warning, quote, this is about morality. Even sexual preference has all of a sudden been changed in the dictionary to where it's offensive. How far do they want us to go? (laughs) What? Wait until animalism becomes acceptable and someone can marry a cow and have perverse sex with them. As opposed to regular (laughs) sex with them. You think I'm laughing. That's what's going to come. End quote. Yeah, the, the marriage license, that's the thing holding back the cow fuckers. That's a good point. <laughs> if only I had the paperwork. <laughs> I want to have some perverse sex with this cow instead of this normal unmarried cow sex. It's vanilla shit. What? <laughs> Says we can't do weird stuff till I put a ring on it. <laughs> I also like that based on that quote, People very clearly started laughing at the idea of perverse cow yeah, sex. Right. Right? <laughs> exactly. Not funny. Yeah. Take it serious. No, I'm not, it's very serious. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm not sure uh, why he's riding the cow sex train at this point, but perhaps he's hoping to distract his viewers from the fact that back in June, he promised God was going to unleash a September surprise that would turn around Trump's polling numbers. Either way, I can't wait for the flame war between the conspiracy theorists promoting the mutually exclusive theories of bovicide, cow fucking, and cow orifice obstruction. Just, <laughs> I just, just we're wanting to finish your popcorn before you log on and all. Yeah. <laughs> just to be clear, though, it, it is so commendable, Noah, that you think those are all mutually exclusive. <laughs> bovicide, cow fucking, cow. It's incorrect, but it's commendable. It's adorable that you don't think. That that Venn diagram has a cow asshole shaped fucking a dead cow situation in the middle. That's great. Okay, moving on. Finally tonight. <laughs> in the facts of pro-life news. Fantastic. A forced birtherism activist is making an anti-choice sitcom. Oh, what? Wait, what, what? Sitcom. I said that correctly. Yep. And I swear, we promise, this is not a secret Kickstarter for god-awful movies material. It's not. <laughs> it should be. It's it's so much better worse than we could have ever done on purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Janet Porter, president of the evangelical group Faith 2 Action, with the number two, mm-hmm. it's just a number, it's clever. She's also a um, successful lobbyist for fucking heartbeat bills. That's a real thing oh, she does with her fuck. life. And also live action Kyle's mom. If you ever see her, she that's what is happening with her physical appearance. She put a whole bunch of thought into this and she wants to explore the the situational comedy surrounding abortion. Hmm. Okay. In a show. To be fair, most situational comedies are about abortion. They just don't know they're about abortion. <laughs> so <laughs> against all odds, the backstory to this project might even be dumber and more upsetting than the current idea. It all started four years ago when Porter decided to make an abortion-themed 
rom-com. Really? She raised $2 million to make a romantic comedy no. about abortion, I about don't. a woman who falls in love with the son of a pro-choice congressman. So basically Romeo and Juliet, but, you know, compelling. <laughs> the cast included Mike Huckabee, Steve King, Ooh. SNL alum Victoria Jackson, uh. and Stephen Baldwin. Wow. Yet somehow with that cast, it never managed to get a green light from Hollywood. Huh. So the project got aborted. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Some tells me Janet's still carrying it. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but last week, you're correct. Porter announced that she repurposed that material and made it into a sitcom. It's called What's a Girl to Do? And it has a jaunty saxophone theme song. <laughs> Seriously, watch this trailer. It's fucking insane. Yeah, we'll have it linked on the show notes. <laughs> it's like someone set out to prove there is no universe worse than 2020 wrong. <laughs> it's it's, it's it, madness. It's like she's trying to trick people who would normally never watch a show that was pro-abortion into never watching her show just because it sucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> God, I thought I was having a stroke. Like, <laughs> bam, 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 abortion. Oh. And the volume is weird. There's so much. There's, there's oh. so much. They're dancing, doing physical comedy bits. Oh, it's it ridiculous. deserves its own cam episode. It's seven oh, yeah. seconds long and it deserves its own cam episode. <laughs> it deserves its own like worst idea ever for a year. We just watched that one minute trailer. It's yes. nuts. Yes. All right. Well, it looks like Janet Porter is taking a break from banning female bodily autonomy. So that's good. Uh, bad news, the Supreme Court is in charge of that yeah, now. Yeah, right. But now Janet Porter's entire job is creating material just for us. <laughs> and all she's missing from this amazing, amazing project is a good title. So let's go ahead and put 30 seconds on the clock. We're going to help out. Titles for the abortion-themed sitcom oh, okay. that she's really, right. really doing. Go. Uh, two men. <laughs> Mine is the um, <laughs> coat hanging with Mr. Cooper. Ooh, wow! I used to watch that show. Um, how I trapped your mother. Mm. Oh, uh, still getting to see your friends. <laughs> <laughs> On a related note, married with slumber. <laughs> uh, Arrested Development. Uh, <laughs> this is Kim's inconvenience. Okay. Um. Two significantly less broke girls. <laughs> um, six feet us under. Oh, nice. Well, well done. Yes. Well done. And while we further lament our job security, I guess we can close the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Samson and just having plenty of time to himself. And when we come back, Don Ford will be here for the Bible's most ass joke friendly story. Okay, so when it eats the peanut butter, you jump out. Wait, I'm jumping out? I thought you were jumping out. Hey, hey guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, Noah. Heath and I are super hungry, but we don't want to go to the grocery store or a restaurant because we don't want to die. So we're trapping our own food. Yeah, we got a box and everything. Well, why don't you guys just try Blue Apron? What's, What's Blue Apron? Blue Apron? No, Stop it. No, Stop it is it. my turn. No, it, it, it is not. You did the ad last week. You did the I question did it. thing. I didn't. I, you did. No, look at the board. October 19th is a Heath week. No, because we recorded the bonus this past uh, okay, Sunday. Okay, all right. That's but, not, but guys, no. Blue Apron brings fresh what, ingredients from What are you even talking about? Your... Bonus episodes don't have commercials. It that doesn't, doesn't even matter. matter. The treaty of 2018 clearly states no matter how no, many ads no. are on the show. No, that treaty was violated during the intercept of Skeptocrat 121, and you know it. You've conceded that on the record. Okay, guys, not. guys, we really need the advertising money right now. Give me, give me it. No, me get off me. Stop I, it. Stop you, it. They'll send you Stop a box it. You're of food and yourself. some recipes. He's biting me. He's biting me. <laughs> Noah. Stop biting. It always happens. You know, most of Bible Peace Theater consists of us trying to figure out how to work genealogies and genocides into our wacky voice dynamic. But there are some stories that remind us why the hell we started doing this segment. And that's why we're abnormally pleased to bring you this month's astastic installment of Bible Peace Theater. <laughs> 
And so then she blocks me on Instagram. Get out of here, because that's where she was putting the free pictures of her feet in the first place. Exactly. Thank you. Guys, that's ridiculous. guys uh, two things. One, that's a callback to an ad on a different show. And two, uh, are you ready to do more of First Samuel? Yeah, I guess so. Not my fault that people don't listen to all the podcasts. All right. All right. So what happens next? Not your fault. Right. So you'll recall that last time God gets mad at Eli because his sons are a bunch of douches and decides that the child Samuel is his new prophet or messenger. Right. Right. So, OK. So sometime after that, Israel goes to war with the Philistines again. Commander, commander. Uh, yes, Jewish elders. Uh, we're getting our thukuses kicked out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are. Oh, uh, we need, we need the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, you mean the, the magic Ark we have that helps us defeat our enemies? The very same. Do you guys ever think it's weird that we don't just start with the Ark of the Covenant? I mean, now that you mention yeah, it. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's kind of yeah, weird. a little strange. So they get the ark, and, and, and when it gets to the camp, they all shout so loud that the earth shakes. And so I saith to her, how much for a stone carving of your feet? Reasonable. Thank thee. A totally reasonable. Thank thee. Ah! Oh, the Jews must have gotten their ark of the covenant. Yeah, must have. You think they'll kill us now? Eh, probably not. Yeah, okay. So uh, what did she say? So, so she called me a weirdo. Rude. So rude, right? Right. So even with the Ark, the Philistines win uh, again, and this time they kill 30,000 Israelites, including Eli's sons, and they steal the Ark. Bro, bro, where are you? <coughs> I'm here, bro. I'm here, bro. Bro. You're all, like, stabbed and shit. Bro, so are you. We're both I stabbed. Know. I know, bro. I'm, I'm totes my goats gonna die. Totes my goats. Hashtag me too. Oh, hashtag classic. Right. Uh, yeah. Look, bro. So, uh, uh so, something I, I want to tell you before I die. Uh, yeah, yeah, bro. What is it? Um, you. Uh-huh. You're gay. No. No, you're gay. No, you are. <laughs> no, <clears throat> you're gay. So uh, a man runs from the battle with his garments rent and his head covered in earth to tell Eli all the bad news. <sighs> oh, Eli, Eli the prophet. Whoa, what happened to uh, you? Well, I, I've just come from the battle. I, I have terrible news. Your I mean, you got dirt all over your face, and, and your clothes are ripped. You know your clothes well, are ripped, right? Yeah, no. Like, like I said, I just came from the big battle. Wow. 30, and, like, you, you didn't even pass any water on your way here from the battle so you could wash your face before you talked well, to I me? I passed plenty of water. I, I, I just thought that... You would, or you could have gotten a new garment, maybe, because I could just see your balls, dude. I'm well, just, I'm just looking at your. You balls. You don't have right to now. look at. Look, your sons are dead, and the Philistines took the ark. Are you happy? I mean, no. In fact, I'm so unhappy, I'm gonna fall down and break my neck. Wait, you're you're gonna fall down and break your neck? Yes, yes, I am. I'm, I'm sorry, like million dollar baby style. Yes, I guess so. Such a stupid ending to that movie, right? What was that? I, it made no sense. It, like, it's like Clint Eastwood was just like, oh, and now the movie is sad. Exactly. Fuck Clint Eastwood. It's totally. Uh, wife of Phineas. Wife of Phineas. Um, uh, who's Phineas? Uh, that's the name of one of Eli's sons. Oh, oh, right. Uh, hi. What's up? Uh, your husband. I hate to say uh, this. Your husband. Wait, wait. Is what the hell happened to your shirt? Did it? Did it get caught on a nail or? Wait, what the fuck is wrong just, with you people? Is there some dress code what? post battle that I don't know about? All right. All right. Okay. Mr. Dirty Face, what's your news? Your husband is dead. Oh, I'm just so sad I could have a baby and die. Um, it's, it's a boy. Does that help? Oh, yes. This exact sequence is in the book. Yes, it is. 
So the Philistines take the Ark back to their town and set it next to their statue of the god Dagon. Uh, who's Dagon? Oh, he's an ancient Mesopotamian and ancient Canaanite water god. He's kind of like Poseidon, but he's a merman. Oh, like, like in The Little Mermaid. Yeah, exactly. Like in The Little Mermaid. Nice. Is that relevant to the Bible story? or? Okay, sometimes this segment just has fun facts, Eli. Okay. It's a fun fact. Okay. Jeez. People like my fun facts. <gasps> there we go, fellow Philistine. There's Jew God right next to our God, Dagon. That's right, fellow Philistine. Did you know Dagon is a fertility god? I did not. What a fun fact. It is a fun fact. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, should we go home and leave these statues alone? Why, yes. I do believe so. It's not like they'll have a weird god fight or anything. Exactly. There's no reason to think they would have not a weird god fight if we leave and just leave them here. No. Right. Yeah. Great. So, uh, you want to get dinner? I have more fun facts uh, for dinner. Got to get home to my family. Oh. Oh, that, no, that's cool. That's cool. Maybe some other... I'm probably uh, busy. Oh, uh, okay. Noah, Eli keeps destroying me and Don's friendship. He, he always kills us right Heath, when we're having a friendship Eli, in the middle of the thing. stop killing Heath and Don when they're friends on Bible Peace Theater. People die in the Bible, Heath. Read a book. I read this book already. You don't even know. You, guys, you read guys, it. Guys, guys, okay. So late that night, God gets up to do a miracle. Sarah, Sarah. Yes, Mr. God, what do you want? Help me, help me push this statue of Dagon over. Make me share a pillinth with a god, I'll show them. On it, on it. Mm. Nice. And if they put it back, next time we'll tip it over again, but this time we'll cut off its hands and that'll really show. Totally, totally, yeah. You're the creator of the universe. I sure am, Sarah, I sure am. Okay, but what if they still don't give back the art thingy that they have? Oh, well, let's just say that if they don't give back the Ark thingy, I'm going to be a real pain in their ass. Mm, morning. Hmm? Uh, oh, yeah, yep, yeah, morning. Uh, so, uh, how, how's it going? What? With you. Oh, hey, hello. No, good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Good. Yeah. So uh -huh. crazy about the statues falling oh, over, right? Because we said yeah, that totally probably wouldn't crazy. be an issue. Totally crazy. Crazy. Yeah. 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 So. Uh-huh. Hmm. Hey, uh, I just thought of this. Did, did anything, did anything else crazy happen to you and like maybe your whole family this week? Uh, anything like that? Uh, did anything crazy happen to you and your whole family this week? I, I have so hemorrhoids. Many hemorrhoids. Oh, thank oh, God. Okay, oh. we both. All right, that's okay. got to be a, a oh, related huge relief. Uh, so this is like uh, what? No, like a Jew God. Jew God. Thing, totally. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All so right. let's get rid of this thing. All right. Sure. Hey, uh, Philistines of Gath. Uh, hey guys, what's that? Uh, what's this? Uh, oh, this. Oh, this. This is. Uh, just the Ark of the Jews. Ark of the Jews. We brought it oh, for you. Oh, nice. Yeah. I hate those guys. And this is their Ark? Oh, sure yeah. is. Yep. And it is yours now. What? Yeah. Are, are you sure? You guys don't want it? Yeah. Oh, no. We're totally all done you. with it. Uh, we uh, we peed on it and uh, stuff. You know, yep. the usual. Oh, wow. Thanks. Absolutely no problem. No, no totally. No. Enjoy. Ah, oh, wow. That's so cool. You guys want to have a seat? You know, eat some hummus or whatever it is we eat during this time period? Ah, uh, uh, just not. Not really in a sitting mood no, right now, but thank no, you. me either, but uh, yeah. Are you, are you sure? Very oh, sure. 100% yeah, yeah, certain. Very much so, yeah. No sitting, please. No. You want a horse for your ride home? Please stop uh, saying no. uh, ass-related things. So as you can probably guess, all the Philistines in Gath get hemorrhoids, and, and then they try to pawn it off on the people over at Ekron. Hey, Philistines of Ekron, uh, you guys want a Jew Ark? Wow, awesome, yeah. I'd love a Jew Ark. Are you sure you're done with it? Well, yeah, it um, gave me and everybody else in town hemorrhoids. So. Oh, it did? Yep, sure did. Uh, and the city before us. Do, do, do you still want it? 
I mean, what are the chances a third city is going to get hemorrhoids? Am I right? I mean, that's what I figured, yeah. Masks are stupid. I can't you believe you're talking about it. I can't believe you're going to get hemorrhoids. I'm so this. uncomfortable. Guys, oh, you. guys, it's guys, bubbling. guys, this is getting us nowhere. Let's go to our priests and fortune tellers, you know, and, and they'll tell us how to get rid of all these hemorrhoids. You are. Hear me, fellow Philistines. If ye seek to break this curse of the Ark of the Covenant, ye can't send it back empty. Uh, ye must send it back with, uh, with an offering of trespass. Okay, like what? You must send, uh, five, uh, golden mice and, uh, five golden, uh, hemorrhoids. Uh, I'm sorry, what? did you say... What? Five golden hemorrhoids? Uh, yeah, to, uh, you know, to represent the plague upon you. So you want us to, to make hemorrhoids out of uh -huh. gold uh -huh. and then give them as an apology offering to the Jews? Also mice. Well, yeah. I did say that. Also mice. Uh, okay, just circling back. Uh, awkward question. How do you make a golden hemorrhoid? Exactly. Great question. Does yes. one of us, like... Pose for it? What does that even mean? I think we make a mold? And then oh, you think okay. it's a mold? Okay, okay. That's neither here nor there, okay? Really? It's you, relevant. Uh, no. You, you, you must put the golden hemorrhoids in the ark, in a cart, and send it off. If the cart ends up with the Jews, it was Jew God. If not, we all just randomly got hemorrhoids. Okay, okay but just to be clear, this is what happens in the Bible. Almost exactly word for word, yeah. Look, everyone. This cart just rolled into town, and it's got the Ark inside. Hooray! Hooray! Adventure. Oh, but that's not all. Someone also put five golden mice in there. Hooray! Ooh, yeah, hooray. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, also. And, and five Ferrero Rochets. Oh, yeah! Wow, the hazelnut. Up, up, up. Check that. Not Ferrer Rochers. Do not eat those. I repeat, these are not Ferrer Rochers. Mm. Oh. Mm. And with visions of golden hemorrhoids dancing through your heads, I think our work is done here, but we'll be back next month with even more Bible Peace Theater. <laughs> Before we cash the bowl tonight, I wanted to apologize to anybody who tried to get an ebook copy of our new book since the last episode. There was a problem with the formatting that caused the Kindle store to temporarily halt sales. We're still in the process of getting everything fixed, but it should be available by Monday at the latest. If you can't wait that long, though, I should point out that the physical copies of the book are now available and they get them to you really fucking quick. We had a listener in Japan order one and get it in like a day, I think. So check the show notes for links to buy your copy of Outbreak, A Crisis of Faith, How Religion Ruined Our Global Pandemic, or wait for the ebook version or the audiobook version, both of which are coming soon. Anyway, that's all the blast we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptocrat, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday. An even newer episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half sister show, Citation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I need to thank Heath Enright for kicking so much ass. I want to thank Eli Bosnick for taking so many names. I want to thank the lovely and talented Lucinda Delusions for doing both ass related and non ass related things. I need to thank the Simpsons Watch Along podcast for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. Learn more about them in the show notes for this episode. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best people, Ray M. Maratus, David, Tiago, Evan, Jessica, John, Mark, Rick, Jeff, Daniel, Casey, Fluffy Fox, number four, Angela, Luke, Ben, and Vincent. Ray Emeratus, David, Tiago, Evan, and Jessica, who are so advanced aliens say they built the pyramids. John, Mark, Rick, Jeff, Daniel, and Casey, who have to wear Kevlar condoms. And Fluffy Fox, number four, Angela, Luke, Ben, and Vincent, whose orgasm histories show up as cosmic background radiation. Together, these 17 succulent secularists satisfied our insatiable need for sustenance this week by giving us money. Not everybody has the money it takes to give some of it to us, but if you do, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking 
clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scalingads.com. And if you'd like to help, but money's too expensive, you can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review, following at PIATPod on Twitter, and telling a friend about the show. The legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson handles our social media, and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scalingads.com. <laughs> and when we come back, Morgan will have gotten the and when we come back blank thing that I'll have sent him when I send the the diatribe and everything. I'll send you this and, and do it separately. Please keep it as that. Yeah, no. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC, copyright twenty twenty, all rights reserved.